Hi, I'm Adrian and I'm a designer. And my name is Florine and I'm a happy camper. And today we're going to talk about hashtag no filter. Is that still a thing? Hashtag no filter? I don't know, I'm not an avid uh, Instagram user. Okay, I used, to, I used to only see people who get busted when they say, ah, no filter, and it was totally filtered. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the sunset is so nice. Yeah. I guess it was. Exactly, it wasn't, yeah. Okay. These colors are, don't look natural, man. <laughs> Sorry, but no. Uh, something else that's probably not natural. <laughs> not natural. Um, what are we drinking? Hippo size beverage jumbo root beer. This brings tears to my eyes. Because root beer. I don't, I don't know who ever thought that, you know. Let's make something that tastes like Listerine, but that you actually swallow. <laughs> I, I, I'm not, I don't get it. <laughs> Good. All right. Cheers. It's like Listerine that you swallow, <laughs> right? <laughs> right. That's yeah, pretty bad. <laughs> so, um, no filter, I guess, but I guess we're going to talk about filters. We're going to talk about filters, yeah, um, and blend modes. Okay. So. What does that mean? What does that mean? I don't know what that means. I just recently stumbled upon um, a talk by uh, Yuna Kravitz. Okay. Who uh, also made a CSS gram, which is a really cool way to reproduce filters in Instagram, Instagram uh, by using CSS, which uh, they actually made a GitHub project and they have a separate site just for CSS gram. And you can contribute by actually making reproducing a filter. Okay, let's really have cool. a look. Let's have a look. So this is CSS Gram. Yep. You can pick a, a photo that you want to see. Let's see, and then they will show the hashtag. Uh, yeah, this, yeah, so this there's is hashtag no, no filter. No, no filter. <laughs> and that's uh, 97. So and when you hover, you will see the, the original, the I original. think, yeah. yeah. That's pretty cool. And this is all done uh, with CSS, and there's no Photoshop involved. Or no Photoshop whatsoever. at all, no. Okay. no. Actually, Unicravitz had a talk that said something, the end of Photoshop. I don't remember the exact title. <laughs> okay. That well, that's pretty cool. This. Yeah. So I'm really happy about this because basically this means that all the stuff that I used to put in Photoshop files back when I still used Photoshop and Illustrator to uh, make web design, uh, we can actually now do that on the web. Well, that's really cool. That's that's really cool. And less uh, annoying to you guys, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Um, but okay, so we saw filters. Um, I guess the filters, what, what kind of filters are there? Can you give us some examples? Um, uh, there's a ton of filters. Uh, I mean, you can, you can basically... Um, you can combine them? You can, you can apply multiple filters if you want. So you can uh, blur stuff, you can... Uh, uh, change use colors. Some, change colors, yeah, using something they call hue rotate. Okay. Um, uh, then there's, uh, you can change saturation, brightness, uh, contrast, all kinds of stuff you can, you can change. It's really, really cool. Okay, that's really nice. So you can basically do like image photo editing in your browser, which is pretty neat. Uh, okay. It's a bit unrefined, I think, because I'm, I'm attuned to like... Having a mask layer that will... Exactly. Uh, so it's draw where it applies. Where stuff applies and, okay. and combine multiple parts and, you know, a bit more complex stuff. But for like basic... Uh, applications of, uh, say you have one photo in color somewhere and you want to use the same photo for something else but black and white on one page, you, can, you only have to load the image once, no? Okay, that, okay that's really cool. Um, so that, but that's filters. Um, what, what do blend modes do? Uh, blend modes are uh, the thing that we use <laughs> in Photoshop a lot, like multiply. Oh, stop saying Photoshop, man. I'm uh, sorry, man. It's, it's not about the web, it's not about Photoshop. It's not an ad for, but you know, it's still, it's still for many people, it's still a reference point. Like okay. Photoshop yeah. is the, the way to do web design, even though. Okay, back to blend modes. Back to blend modes. Yeah. So, uh, blend modes are basically uh, um, combine uh, images and colors in CSS. I think so. You can multiply a color onto a background image, for instance. Only colors, or you can uh, multiply elements on other elements? Uh, I think you can, yeah. Yeah. So, so this basically, you create layers, and then you're going to tell how the top layer should affect the bottom the layer. The bottom layer, yeah. So how they, how they should mix, basically. Okay. And standard and way is just to be an opaque um, ex layer ex on, or, on top. Or a transparency, but it's just it just sort of fills on top. They don't really okay. interact. So 
the image that is underneath, for instance, doesn't really affect the top layer at all. Yeah, and with blend modes, that uh, would that can be depending changed, yeah. on the blend modes, that should. Okay, that was really cool. And these are these are basically analog to the way that Photoshop does this. So they have multiply and overlay and screen mm -hmm. and soft light, soft light, light hard light, uh, et cetera, view. Et all yeah. it's a list. I mean, okay. <laughs> but let's 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 have a look at an example of where how we can, how you could apply that. Yeah, let's. We're actually working on uh, creating a web designer website uh, yep. currently. Um, this is going to be uh, part of our header. Yeah. So what? Are you, yeah. What we can see here is we have a blue and a red layer, and yeah. Okay. We can scroll that and go over and over the over the photograph. Um, but we look awesome. <laughs> okay. So we have the uh, these two, a red and a blue. Uh, layer here. Yeah, so it's like a slanted, yeah. slanted yeah. thing. And I could, of course, um, I have the CSS right next here, and I could change uh, the opacity of this layer. So I could do opacity ninety uh, percent. Uh, it's zero point six, like this. And then you, then of course, it would be transparent. Yeah, but that's not, not that's not really that's not really the effect we want because no. this way it also flattens out the color. Yeah, that, that's kind of sad. So, yeah. but we can use the mix blend mode property. Yes. So let's put it to multiply, set it to multiply, and that, now you can see that the red color affects here the image. The blue color affects the red as well. Yeah. So they mix sort of mix together to make like a dark purplish black color, which is really yeah. cool. And I can scroll this over, so it's dynamically adding, and this. Virtually impossible to do with this without this property. Yeah, can change it to screen, so that's a different way of layering it, and it's yeah, it's uh, also uh, works. Yeah, looks looks funky. <laughs> yeah, it looks really funky. So this is these are this is an example of how you can use blend modes. Um, but how is support? I was gonna ask you really. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but of course we have this great site called CanIUse.com yeah. by now. Every web developer should know about it. Um, if you don't, you do now. Yeah, support support is pretty pretty good. Um, the only thing left out is uh, all Microsoft products. So that's yeah, IE, not so IE and Edge. Yeah, nothing, but on, nothing there yet. On filters, they do better, yeah. On filters, they do better. There is some support for filters in uh, in Edge, but I think they're limited to only a subset. Um, that's kind of a shame. Um, that's kind of a, sh a shame. But still, I think um, you can use these today because they can be fall fall back. I mean, in the example of our website header, would it be terrible if people would see just a, just a, a blue the or red? Yeah, uh, my designer heart breaks. But other than that, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, really, uh, I don't think it would affect um, a user's like using the the website. It wouldn't affect them too much. It, and that's sort of my problem with all these filters and blend modes is that this is a feature that is mostly about visual gimmickry. There is very little re uh, uh, functional value in. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I said before that you could make a site lighter by reusing an image, or, or you know, you could you could do some things that that uh, that would help. Uh, make your site more performant. For instance, I could also Im imagine that if you do like a multi dialogue and you blur the background, for mm -hmm. instance, that that could theoretically work. Um, but other than that, it's it. Well, is it that could, is yeah. that better than just having like a 0.9 percent black overlay behind the dialogue? I don't. I'm not seeing the difference really. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, I guess it could help in uh, increasing contrast, especially if you work with photographs or images, and then you have text on top of these images. I guess that that could really help there. Mm -hmm. that, yeah, that it could be a bit unpredictable though, because you know, from image to image, it will affect it differently. Of course, so that, but but it can it can just give really nice. It can make it can make your design just a little bit more, a bit better looking, flashy, a bit nicer. And I think it doesn't come at that high cost performance wise. Um, well, I guess, especially if you look at bytes to load, that's going to mm -hmm. be really good. And as you saw, these filters are quite fast because, um, if I'm not mistaken, they're mostly done on the GPU and your graphics card. Okay. So that's, that's insanely fast. Yeah, that, that does help. <laughs> that, <laughs> that does that help. Does, yeah. That does help. So. Yeah. 
better okay. than just load load the effect in an image. So that's yeah. how you would do that before. Yeah. You absolutely had to have the multiply effect to flatten it out <laughs> and then just put that in there. Yeah, and especially if you um, if you wanted to have the image change, you still needed to have two images and you have to exactly. create them in Photoshop or you have or you have a server side script that did it for you. Mm -hmm. But still that would be an impact on the performance of your website. Exactly. And so. I, especially if you you couldn't make that responsive, really. If you had for instance, you had to have a certain effect to make sure that your text is legible in all situations, which I think is a bad idea, by the way. Yeah. But let's say that you had that. You couldn't do that by just flattening it out on, on an image. because no. Or okay. you had to reload yeah. the image every time. And, and as we showed in the header example, you, that would not be possible because that would be, is dynamic. The, um, the bars, they scroll on top of the image. Exactly. Change yeah. The image, yeah. Based on the image that. is fixed. Yeah. The image is fixed. So you could probably hack it some way, but that would be really, really tricky. Yeah. Okay. I can imagine doing something like this with a video and then base the video on scroll position. Oh my god, that sounds complicated. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to <laughs> taste this again. I, I'm not sure why, but I'm gonna. So, we have talked about filters and blend modes, and uh, I, the thing I really love about blend modes is that the you add something, a layer on top with uh, with, with Z index or mm -hmm. something like that, um, and it affects the thing below. But that's not really possible with filters, right? So you, you as you, as you said, the filters are very inflexible. You just it's you have uh, a box, and then you say, okay, uh, apply filter here, and yeah, do it do it to this thing. Yeah, and but that that means if you have a box that has a background image and text on it, and you just want to blur the image, you can't. No. It blurs everything in the box. So if if, it, if the element has like five pixel blur, it would also five blur pixel blur text. all the text and oh. everything else that's that's okay. in it. And it would also give weird edges, by the way. So it will blur out the edge around the image, make them <laughs> white. <laughs> yeah. Which uh, I mean is is natural behavior. I get that, but it does look a bit strange. Uh, but there is something that we can use. Unfortunately, support for that is not very good. Um, it's in Okay, so it's what are we talking about? Uh, we're talking about uh, uh, backdrop filters. So you okay. can apply a filter to something that's underneath an element, basically. Okay, so the filter, it's like an air. You def def by ha you, a, a layer will apply the effect on the stuff. Below. That's underneath it. That's yeah. underneath, yeah, and not exactly. itself. Not itself. So you could have a box that is blurring an image underneath it, but it still has the text. Okay. inside that is normal, which is sometimes what you want. Okay, let's have a look. Yeah, let's have a look. So this is an example I whipped up real quick. Um, this is a page that has you know, a white header bar up top. It, it has, has some text, co okay. it has some content, background image, and an image inside the content. And I uh, gave the, the header up top, I gave it 50% opacity. Okay. And the background. The background, exactly. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's white and then, so yeah, you can make it whiter if you wanted that. Okay. So, but this is the interesting bit here. Yeah, that's the cool part. That's the backdrop filter uh, setting, and I uh, added a, a blur to that. <laughs> so if you were to, let's say, make blur 10. Okay, 10 pixel. It would actually blur what's underneath it. So now if you scroll. I'm going to make the. Change that back change, to. Change, change yeah. the, the opacity. So you can actually see that it blurs everything that goes underneath it, which is really, really cool. It's really, really cool. So it gets like that iOS frosted effect. Okay. And speaking of iOS, actually, iOS is one of the few places where this actually works, unfortunately. And in Chrome, when you have enabled the experimental yeah. uh, web features flag, um, which I've done here, so we can show could We, we can show, show this, yeah. Show it also works in Safari on desktop, but I, why would you want to use Safari? <laughs> <laughs> so, but it's a really cool effect. Um, and that's probably even more useful than just having the filter property. I mean, the filter property is, is cool. It's um, nice, yeah, it, it uh, has its, its uses, to, I guess. Yeah. But only, I think uh, that the backdrop filter has more practical applications than the, In probably, the general yeah. filters. Because yeah, the filters probably. feel very, very gimmicky to me. Okay. Yeah. This could actually be useful if you, have, if you don't know what's underneath it, that you have uh, an unpredictable background, for instance, that you could actually sort of even that out a bit. Mm -hmm. But then people will probably say that, you know, blur is the uh, outer tune of visual elements. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. It's, it's going to be a trade-off, I guess. I guess so, yeah. Which I really like. So, these are really cool effects. Um, 
one of the things I'd like to know is, can you animate them? Uh, yes, you can. Well, within reason. Uh, you can, can do a few animations, so uh, let's have a look at that. Okay, here we have another example. And before we go into the whole animation thing, um, this is actually how the uh, the exam the first example we showed by uh, Yuna Kravitz uh, yep. works. So how they combine filters and blend modes. Yeah. So they use uh, pseudo elements to actually add. Yeah, they have a, a full screen before um, where they just add a gradient for something, and you can see this uh, pretty obvious. By the way, the top image is the original image and the bottom image is the filtered image. So if I'm going to make this uh, black, you can see that it uh, will go like that and, I, and do it white and you can see that it's actually a radial gradient around <laughs> the, uh, the whole thing. Awesome. And I can change, of course, the uh, the blend mode. Yeah, multiply on white, that does, does nothing. <laughs> uh, as you can clearly hear, I'm not, this, uh, I'm not a designer. So, um, But let's put it back. Uh, because the cool thing we wanted to talk also about nice. is um, now we have what do we have in here? Overlay, I think. Overlay, yeah. Um, the cool thing here is that we have added an animation. So if I'm going to hover, it will do a U rotate. Whoa, Whoa that's, that's funky. A, that's a freaky <laughs> effect. I mean, this is a very exaggerated use case. No, it is. It is a very exaggerated exaggerated use case. But the um, the animation only works with filters that actually have a number where we can change. We can change here. I mean, um, if I'm going to remove the U rotate, I can just we can just do the saturation and we can put it to zero. And, and it's black and white. And it's black. It's black and white. But yeah, again, how? I mean, you can animate them. That's cool. I'm, I'm pretty sure someone will come up with a fun and novel idea how to use that. But I can't really see a like a real life application where I, I would have a client where I would make something I'm that would actually require me to have this. I'm going to finish this with just saying sometimes you just want to be a happy camper. Okay, so thanks for liking, commenting and, sus and subscribing and we'd like to thank our sponsors DigiPaint and Photo for making this all possible and we'll see you in the next one.